Alien Covenant is a sci-fi thriller directed by Ridley Scott and starring Michael Fassbender, Catherine Waterstone, Billy Crudup and Danny McBride. This movie is a direct sequel to Prometheus and everyone pretty much hates Prometheus for one reason or another. Stupid characters, stupid themes, no alien, blah blah blah. I quite like Prometheus. There is a I love it because of the themes, because it's different from the other alien movies. Even though it is pretty much an alien movie just with no xenomorph. And yet, Ridley Scott heard the fans and he said, you know what? The people want a xenomorph and I'm gonna give them one. The movie is about the crew of the Covenant, which is a gigantic ship that is going to colonize a planet on a new galaxy. But after a couple of technical problems, and finding a mysterious radio transmission, the crew of the Covenant goes to a different planet than the one they intended, a planet that they could inhabit, and they're going to find out who is on the planet, who made that transmission. And well, as you might imagine, some things go horribly bad until we get some xenomorph action. And I was a little bit skeptic going into this movie, I really didn't know what to think about it because just like Prometheus, it's been getting a lot of mixed reviews. Some people are loving it, some are downright despising it, hating it, saying that it goes against the entire Alien franchise. Honestly, I don't know if I would recommend it to anyone because everyone is having different opinions about it. If I like Prometheus, and I really like this movie actually, but some people who like Prometheus hated this one, some who hated Prometheus like this one, it's a clusterfuck, okay? You just have to go watch the movie for yourself, but purely from a technical standpoint, this movie is amazing. I mean, the cinematography is beautiful, there are some amazing shots, there are amazing vistas, there are a couple of very impressive long takes, there are gorgeous, gorgeous shots of nature, of people walking around, of environment, of desolated areas, they are amazing. And then when we get to the actual action stuff, it is actually pretty well filmed. It is more engaging, more... Mm, not shaky, not really shaking, but the, the camera is handheld. It moves around a little bit throughout the action, but it is still very clear to understand. The music by Jed Kurtzell is easily among the best one of the franchise. It retakes some themes from the original Alien movie and from Prometheus and reworks around them. And it isn't an overblown soundtrack and neither is it too subtle. It is just pretty much perfect for this movie, it works perfectly, it is also very enjoyable to listen to while studying or doing other things, like I am right now for the exams. Fuck. Sound design is also excellent, with downright disturbing moments made creepy purely by sound, just like in the original Alien movie, and the practical effects and sets, they are... Oh, so amazing, they are blended perfectly with the CGI elements, except for the Xenomorph, because this time around the Xenomorph is pretty much 100% or at least 90% CGI. It shows, I'm not gonna lie, but it didn't bother me as much because since they made it with CGI they can make him do incredibly crazy things, and he's constantly moving around, jumping, crawling, he's amazing, he's moving everywhere. So. You don't have that much time to focus on the actual effect, so it did not bother me in the final product, except for a couple of shots, it looks pretty great. And the acting, and the story, I mean this time around, you care about the freaking characters, and while they're not deep or incredibly memorable like the ones in the first Alien movie, they're at least more interesting than the majority of the characters from Prometheus. I mean, Catherine Waterstone as the second in command on the ship, she's pretty good and she gives a pretty solid performance in this movie. She is the new Ellen Ripley because every single lead character in these movies is a female, so everyone is a new Ellen Ripley. But she was actually pretty good, with interesting motivations, with interesting backstory. Then the rest of the crew is pretty good, I liked seeing Billy Crudup in a movie that's actually bigger than other more independent movies like Spotlight and Jackie. He's amazing, he's a very good actor. And Danny McBride! Boy, everyone was talking shit about him, but I do like the guy, and in this movie he is great. He gives a solid dramatic performance, there is no humor in the movie, and he is not a comedic relief, he is a real character, probably the most interesting one amongst the humans. And they say amongst the humans because this time around, yet again, we have Michael freaking Fassbender. And he is glorious in this movie. And uh, there is something that I may say that is a spoiler, I'm not gonna say it. 
But in this movie, he plays a different character, a different android. This time around, it's called Walter. And boy, he gives a different performance. They made the android this time around less human than David. Because David made a lot of choices that he shouldn't have made. He was pretty rational. He was more human. So this time around, they took back some features and they made him more simplistic. And Fassbender gives an excellent performance in this movie. Truly, truly excellent, and this is the most memorable part as well. And there is a great arc. And that's the thing that I love about this new trilogy of movies, from Prometheus, Covenant, and then the other one that comes out in a couple of years. The original Alien movies, from the first one to the fourth one, they are not story-based. They are more character-based. Even though they have some themes, of course, they are more focused on the actual characters. In the first one is the crew of the Nostromo, in the second one is the Marines, and there's always Ripley in these movies. In this new trilogy, the main character pretty much is David, played by Michael Fassbender and Walter. And they have an arc that is also implemented perfectly with the actual story of the movie. The story is entertaining and is also philosophical, it has deep themes about creation, about life, about death, and they continue these themes in this movie and appreciated that quite a lot. And there are some scenes that are just awe-inducing, from the dialogue, from the visuals of the movie, it is incredible to look at and it has a really intriguing story. I was constantly engaged in this. But there are some flaws, I have to admit, I'm not a big fan of these movies. There are flaws with this one, undoubtedly. Uh, first of all, the first act is a little bit too slow for its own good, because even though the characters, they try to give them some characteristics and motivations, you still don't care that much about them, so you're just like, come on, let's get going a little bit, even though we're spending time with these characters just talking. It could have been trimmed a little bit, and I watched this movie with my father and throughout the entire movie was predicting pretty much every single thing that was going to happen. And he was right. This movie is predictable, undoubtedly. I don't know if they could have made this not predictable. It is predictable yet, I have to admit it. Uh, it did not bother me that much because the things were interesting, the actual story and watching those predictable things unfold was fun, but it was predictable. And also the climax of the movie, in my opinion, the climax happened 15 minutes before the actual climax and it, uh, there was something weird about it, the actual climax ending of the movie uh, didn't fit all that well in my opinion, it's not bad per se, but uh, it could have ended earlier. And the finale, the finale is great, it makes up for the mediocre climax that came before it. And I am excited to watch the last installment. Everyone is saying we, did, we do not need to know where the Xenomorphs come from. And you don't have to focus about just the actual story in terms of the superficial level of the story. These movies are focused on deeper themes, and you may say that it's a lot of artsy-fartsy bullshit that Ridley Scott is giving us. I take it. I'm liking it. I like philosophical themes in movies, I like themes about creation, about religion, and they are very interesting in this one. So, if you did like Prometheus, check this movie out. If you like the original Alien, check this movie out. Even though you're not interested in the actual themes, there is enough gore, enough violence, enough thrills and excitement to make this movie worthwhile watching in theaters. I had a great time, I was thoroughly entertained, and right now I'm still thinking about the movie, thinking about the characters. I can't wait to check out the next one, I truly can't, and so far, it's one of the most enjoyable movies of the year, while also having some actually interesting themes. So far probably the best blockbuster, big budget blockbuster that I've seen. But still guys, did you like Prometheus and are you excited for Alien Covenant? Tell me in the comments below. Thanks guys for watching, remember to like, comment, subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.